following is a presentation of the Belly Up Sports Media Network. Welcome in, everybody, to another episode of Rising to the Occasion. We're so happy to have you here with us. Uh, man, there's a lot to get to. There's a Chiefs fan that has been getting a little bit of attention, and we're going to talk about that, as well as Aaron Rodgers making a little bit of an appearance back on the field and much more. But before we get into it today, we want to first mention our sponsors. And today it is Big Frig. Big Frig is an amazing sponsor of ours that we absolutely love. You can go check out Big Frig and everything that they have. They've got amazing tumblers, which we're always premiering here on the episodes uh, every time that we are drinking anything most of the time it is always out of big frig because they have the best tumblers they also have amazing coolers and so much more over there Uh, their coolers are high quality uh, products that you can absolutely use for camping hunting tailgating whatever the case may be go check them out at bigfrig.com that's b-i-g-f-r-i-g.com and we've partnered up with them to get you guys an awesome 20 percent off for being our partners and being our listeners Uh, you can go to bigfrig.com and use code rising to 20 for 20 percent off that's right you go to bigfrig.com and use code r-i-s-i-n-g-t-o-2-0 for 20 percent off their amazing products they compare much with any top brand out there when it comes to their tumblers and their coolers so go check them out bigfrig.com and again use code rising to 20 for 20 percent off you can also see that promo code down in the description along with the link over to their website we thank big frig so much for partnering with us and giving us all of this amazing gear uh, we also want to remind everybody if you're watching on youtube go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already we're on our way to 10,000, and we're very excited to reach it so please hit that subscribe button and you can also hit that like button it helps us out greatly uh, and comment down below and whether you hear something that we say that you want to comment about or maybe it's just something that is sports related that you just want to throw out there uh, and you can always give us a five-star review if you're just listening on apple Podcasts, spotify or wherever you listen to um, but let me go ahead and first bring in my co-host for the evening jeremy how we doing man i'm doing pretty good and it's been a long week obviously i know it seems like it's been a long week but we're only in the middle of the week here but doing pretty good i know we got a lot to talk about obviously today like when you first brought up the mention to me about the the Chiefs fan, I looked at that. I'm saying, what in the world is going on in today's modern age? But I mean, I'm not going to say a whole bunch. But obviously, outside of that, we got some other good topics tonight. Obviously, talking about a little bit about Aaron Rodgers getting back on the field. Then we got some Heisman picks, obviously, for our top five. Then going to the in the championship for the college football top ten. I mean, a top ten, top six, excuse me. Then we got a whole bunch of news guys for you. So I'm gonna cut the chit chat, guys, and let's get talking about what we got tonight. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's really exciting getting into some of this stuff. Uh, but first, starting off with just the stupidity that's in the world, and and you brought it up, man. It's uh, it's the Chiefs fan that everyone's putting a, a big rave about. Is this fan racist? Uh, and you know they're making a big fuss about it. And I'll I'll read this article here from Deadspin, which is the big one. Uh, This article, if I can get ads to stop popping up in my way, it says it takes a lot to disrespect two groups of people I once, but on Sunday afternoon in Las Vegas, a Kansas City Chiefs fan found a way to hate black people and the Native Americans at the same time. Uh, It was as if John Gurdon's emails had come to life. Uh, Absolute stupidity in this whole article, man. It says the image of a Chiefs fan in blackface wearing a native headdress during a road game leads to so many on answered questions. Why did the camera person give this fan the attention? Why did the producer allow that camera angle to be aired at all? Uh, and is that, that fan a kid or slash teenager or adult? Uh, despite their, their age, who taught that person that what they were wearing was appropriate? The answers to all of those questions lead back to the NFL. While it isn't the league's responsibility to stop racism and hate from being taught in the home, they are a league that has relentlessly relentlessly participated in prejudice. If the NFL had outlawed the chop at Chiefs games and been more aggressive in changing the team's name, then we wouldn't be here. And I'm just going to stop there. Uh, well, I guess the next paragraph might as well read that one too. It says, there's no place for a franchise to be called the Chiefs in a league that already eradicated Redskins. And so this complete article is total BS. Uh, and Jeremy, it's, it's quite frankly, just, I, I, I don't understand how people take this. So first of all, show the show pick number one real quick for everybody. This is the, the kid that everyone's talking about. They're saying that he's wearing black face and a headdress. They're just taking this pick and saying, look at it. And, and he it starts off with this article, whoever it was that, that wrote this, uh, I might as well look at that real quick just to see if I can, if I can pick on them, uh, for just a moment. Um, but you know, they, they write this article, 
uh, guess that Karen spelled C A R R O N Karen J Phillips. It's Imagine that it was a it was a, a, a freaking Karen. I knew it. Karen was on it. Now the Karen, pieces of the puzzle are coming together. Karen uses this picture and starts off the article by saying that it is hard to disrespect two races or two groups of people at once. Yet this kid did it. Uh, first off, I think that is completely ridiculous. That's a stupid accusation because oh I could say uh, Blake's not with us tonight. Uh, I'm assuming he has he has daddy duties, um, but uh, so better things to do than to talk about this crap. But it would that be as to say, Bl- Jeremy, you are as stupid as Blake. I am now disrespecting two groups of people equally at the same exact time. That's not very hard. So I think that statement in of itself was ab- extremely stupid. Um, but yeah, I mean, just on top of that, just looking at this whole article and people talking for those who don't know, this is what the kid was really wearing. If you pull that one up, Jeremy, he is wearing not a black face. He is wearing a a face paint and he has black and red because he is a chiefs fan. He's wearing his team's colors. And so I just looking at this, it's it's just absolutely stupid to look at this and just to see what people are, are throwing a big fit about when this kid is dressed up. And of course they could still say, yeah, but he's wearing the headdress, uh, which actually to those people, uh, on top of this, the mother came out, uh, and, and was disgraced that her son was even a headline story on all these news outlets and everything. What? And, you know, and so she, she came out there and was just kind of upset that like, why are you guys making a big deal about this? And she she also stated he is Native American. So, you know, he's got Native in his blood even. So on top of that, he's not being racist towards his own kind. <laughs> he's cheering for his team. That tomahawk chalk is not racist. All of this stuff, man, like I wish these kinds of people would be canceled. I don't know what to even say about this. Like I told Josh about this particular kind of uh, like some something similar to this a little bit. Like I'm a Cincinnati fan. I've seen on prime TV and you probably have as well. You see people dressed in black and orange and obviously the same situation. One side's black, one side's orange. Are you going to make a big controversy about that? <laughs> You're wearing orange face. <laughs> exactly. I mean, you, you pick on a, a kid, whether he's a young kid, a teenager, or whatever age group this kid is, you decide to pick him out in the crowd. Like I, I understand, like people, like camera people in the NFL, they'll pick people out in the crowd, and, like they'll show like face reactions or whatever the situation is, and it's the same way in any kind of sport. But you make this kid a headline for this kind of an accusation and make it the worst possible thing to bring up and just bring racism into this kind of a perspective. To me, this is the biggest load of BS I have ever heard of. Well, and it's, it's people just trying to make divisive things. And that's why, you know, this is a big part of why don't you people have anything better to do. This is a big part of why I even started this. And of course, crane and company, I I told Jake and, and uh, uh, Jake and, David both uh, to their face, you know, they, they were a huge inspiration to me to start a, a sports podcast because, you know, it was just getting to the point where I was tired of, I was tired. I, I used to love listening to sports podcasts and, and, you know, hearing about the sports news and all that kind of stuff. And, mm-hmm. uh, and it's, it's because of divisive stuff and it just started making, making me annoyed with it, you know, and I just wanted a sports show that I can just enjoy sports and stop trying to pull this kind of crap. This kid, uh, you know, he should be allowed to, to wear whatever the heck he wants to support his team like this Amen. and, 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 and go out there and, and just be the craziest looking dude. And you know what? All the fans around him loved it. He got pictures with cheerleaders, all kinds of fun stuff because he's just being loud and that's what a fan is it's short for fanatical Amen. because you're supposed to be crazy and going crazy um but that's pretty much all i got on this oh on this gosh. news man but i mean it's just crazy that people go so nuts <sighs> over something and, and it's just non-stop that we're trying to make some way to divide people and they're trying to take away sports from people like you and me who just want to enjoy it i'm a sh- i'm i'm a short for words here guys like it's one thing to you can you can nitpick so many things, but this kid is just living life, loving sports. And when it comes to sports, guys, don't get me wrong. Me and Josh, we, when we're at sporting events, we love to have fun. And obviously, this kid, he's one up in us. He's ha- he's going to the next level, having fun, dressing up. And I, kid, if you get the opportunity to see this, don't let the haters hate. Just let them keep hating. You keep doing you, kid. And if they have a problem with it, they can 
They can shove it. Here, um, here's a here's a shout out to the mm. kid's mom and and the kid himself. If this even gets seen by them, I don't think it will be. But never know. If, if it does, uh, I, I would love to have you guys on. Just talk about yeah, how how great the, you how great the Chiefs are and how you know what. Hey, I love the outfit. If I was there in person. I'm I'm asking to take a picture. Oh, with the I kid. would too. 100%. Yeah, I mean, I, hey, hey, like come over here, yeah. high, high five come at least on, at dude. the very I least. Like, nuts, right? yeah, at, at the very least, a high five or knuckle dude. bump. You know, uh, I I absolutely love it. You know, that mm-hmm. part of part of being a fan is going crazy and yelling at the refs and throwing your beer out on the mm-hmm. field and flipping them off and just all, all kinds of fun stuff. Uh, it's, oh, it, these are all man. things that we see. It, everyone's seen it at, yeah. at any kind of sporting event you go to. You're going to see uh, fans getting crazy, mm-hmm. dressing up wild and. Uh, I, I absolutely love it. So, you know, kid, just keep on doing what you're doing. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I, I don't really know the kid's name. So I'm just going to no. keep on calling you kid because yeah. you're young. Uh, and you know what? I love that you're in, you're this much into a team and what better team to be a part of than the chiefs right now, because man, they're on fire and they're, they're mm-hmm. going to be on fire for a while. Uh, wherever Patty Mahomes can take him. Hey, who knows? Uh, maybe he can help Travis Kelsey and they can maybe take a picture of him and Taylor how, Swift. How amazing would that be? Dude, how amazing would, be would that be? And, and you know what? I just hope the NFL doesn't hear uh, you know, one of, one of these things like what was written over at Deadspin and, oh man, you're right. Man, we, we should go punish this kid. You know, no. Like, <laughs> like, I don't think they can do anything to the fan no. or to the family. But, you know, like to, to even take things away and, and, you know, there's even a big, a big motion here recently about uh, actual Native Americans who are upset that they took their name away from a sports team uh, and, and more upon that. And so you're starting to take their representation out. We name them our teams after them because, you know, for, for the Chiefs or, or, you know, the Tomahawk Chuck, it's a warrior call. And we think that's awesome. And we want to be a part of that. Mm-hmm. And that's why we call our teams after these things. It's out of reverence. So I think it's just ridiculous to even pull the whole racist thing on on us trying to to you know, imitate them. It, it's you know what is it what is it? It's a uh, imitation, imitation is the is, is the greatest the form of flattery. Of so yeah. I mean it, if that that should flatter them. And I think you're starting to see that now with uh, people you know the native people around Washington trying to get their name back on the team because mm-hmm. that's what they want. And yeah. you know it's it's just absolutely crazy. But mm-hmm. let's get into some of the rising news. Thank you <laughs> going on. But another article to read here about Josh Giddy, not a very good one. Uh, Josh Giddy is under investigation of a relationship with a minor uh, and apparently an 18 year old kid. But uh, the Newport uh, Beach, I believe this is from the score. Uh, and it says the Newport Beach Police Department in California launched an, launched an, an active investigation into the Oklahoma City Thunder's Josh Giddy over an alleged relationship with a female minor, according to a press release obtained by ESPN's Tim McMahon on Wednesday. The police department is actively seeking additional information related to these allegations and pursuing all leads and, and evidence to obtain the facts of the case. Uh, The allegations regarding the 21-year-old surfaced on social media last week. Uh, The NBA announced a separate investigation into the Australian on Friday. Giddy has declined uh, declined comments to date. Uh, And then the Thunder head coach also has called Giddy's situation a personal matter and added that the organization decided Giddy would continue playing uh, based on the facts that it had, according to McMahon. And then also Giddy has remained in the Thunder's starting lineup since the allegation surfaced. And uh, on Thursday, which is today when you guys are watching this, they're going to be playing the Lakers, which means that Giddy is planned to be in the starting lineup. Um, but looking at this, I honestly, you know, you know the rules, you know the law. And when you're a big time name, you have to know you, you got, got to keep yourself out of, of bad situations uh, and this is definitely one of them. Uh, the, the picture that I saw was pretty convincing. It looked like a girl taking a selfie with him. He had a shirt off and she says something. It was a Snapchat that says something about uh, I did something with, with, with Josh Giddy. So it's pretty compelling. And, and if she's 18 years old, you know that you're over the age of 18. But still, I, I feel like looking at the situation three years apart, to me, I feel like they're making a bigger deal out of this than really needs to be. So you should be careful and know what you're allowed to do as an adult and do the right thing. But at the same time, to me, I almost wonder if all of this is being brought out of proportion. And like I said, I believe it was an 18 year old girl, if I remember right. So she might have been under 18 and maybe that's what they're investigating. I don't know. But uh, if this is the situation, this could really hurt uh, Josh Giddy and the Thunder. Absolutely. But I mean, here's the way that I see it. Like you get into the situation. We've talked about this on previous episodes. You need to. You need to sincerely think about this kind of stuff and get yourself in the right state of mind. 
you're a 21 year old kid playing in professional NBA and we've seen other people on other sports. I know football. Um, I can't remember the other sports that we've talked about because we've talked about a lot of different, different situations and scenarios like this, but you need to sincerely think about some of the actions that you guys are doing. And I understand like you're caught up in the moment, but at the end of the day, going to bed at night, we're, like having that kind of a thought in your mind is definitely going to be someone that's going to stay in your mind and it's going to sincerely scar you. Now I've, I've seen, I've seen this kind of a situation. Like I said, we've seen it before, but you sincerely need to think about your actions. And obviously I'm, I don't know how old she is. Like you said, 18 or she could be younger than 18, but until we get the exact age, I can't really say a whole bunch, but you need to get your head together and need to figure out your life plan for, for creating something like this, just because if you're going to, if you're going to be getting into this situation, it's definitely going to be a tough, tough road for you later down the road. Yeah. I know we mentioned uh, John Morant is one example that we mentioned several times. There's other college students, you know, Mm -hmm. if you, you look back at, at what, you know, for, for an example, look back at what, Johnny Manziel had at yeah. his, his his exposure, you know, yeah. and it's I wouldn't say what Josh Giddy did is as bad, um, you know, and the you know I get least in the on the outside world's eyes, anyways. But mm-hmm. you know, you have to be careful and know what position you're in, and that everything yeah. that's been that's put on social media is going to be exposed because you are famous. Mm-hmm. And not only that, but Josh Giddy is an extremely talented player oh, and really helping Oklahoma city. They're, they're on fire this year mm-hmm. and they have a really good chance to make a really long run. And so, you know, looking, looking at Oklahoma city, looking at, jo- at, at uh, Josh Giddy, I like what the, what the team is doing uh, and what the NBA is allowing by mm-hmm. allowing him to keep on playing, because I think this is the right move. Yeah. Uh, you know, we, we talked about this with uh, Matt Ariza, how there was all those allegations against him. He's fired from the bills and loses out on all this money. And uh, then comes to find out, uh, you know, we, we all come to find out that he's innocent. And now you just he's fired a guy job. because of, because he's innocent. Uh, and so I like that they're, they're not doing anything too harsh, until they understand the situation more, mm-hmm. until they find out more information, uh, and you know, hopefully the best for Josh Giddy, because like I said, Oklahoma City is on fire. Oh yeah, absolutely. Uh, I, and, and, and to make a pun too, the Thunder is on a roll. Yeah, no kidding. I watched <laughs> Oklahoma City play last night against the Minnesota Timberwolves, and Oklahoma City they were giving him a lot of opportunities with the ball, and he was putting up a lot of points for the Thunder. So, I mean, it was unfortunate. I wanted to see the other team win just because they only lost by three points and I could have went two and oh, but I said I went one for one, but that's see how that goes. But I mean, no, you seriously need to just, I like what they're doing. I agree that you're not going just, you're skipping the middle part and you're going straight to the end. You're going, you're actually seeing the full process of everything and not just jumping straight to the conclusion. You need to, you need to see a lot more. I shouldn't say you need to see a lot more, but I hope later in the future that we can, potentially see more stuff like this instead of just completely join, jumping straight to the conclusion of this. Yeah, and it, it could even, even be just allegations that yeah, exactly. aren't true. So exactly. uh, that, that's the big thing. I've, I'm glad that they're they're doing that much the right way. But mm-hmm. moving on, we've got Aaron Rodgers, the man that got an injury. What was it, like four, four. plays into the into the season? Yeah, maybe, maybe three not even or four, that. maybe. Yeah, it may not have even been that long, but it was really just maybe a minute or two into his Jets career and he goes down with an Achilles injury. It sucked to see him go down because we were all so excited to see what the Jets could put together with Aaron Rodgers at the helm and him being reunited with so many people. But uh, he did end up going down. He was hurt. Uh, but now he's back on the practice field. Let's take a look at Aaron Rodgers back out there in the practice field. See him kind of zipping around the, the rock here. He's in there wearing the number eight jersey. A nice looking throw, too. He's got the mechanic down still. It's just like old muscle memory. Back like he never left. And it's only like a 15-yard pass there or something, but still, it looks looks nice. It looks like he's back in there. So it's it's fun to see him back on the field. I don't imagine he's going to play anytime soon, but yeah. let's say that he's able to get back in. Is it worth putting him back in the game when the season's pretty much already over for the Jets? Uh, See, so do you put Aaron Rodgers back in the game risking an injury for this season, or do you hold off till next season? I mean, New York Jets fans obviously want to see him play, that's for sure, just because they didn't they didn't expect to see half of Aaron Rodgers' New York Jets, um, uh, his introduction to the New York Jets just from the introduction, walking, running from the tunnel to the sideline. <laughs> and um, no, but I, 
there's a part of me that wants to say yes and a part of me that wants to say no. The reason why I say no is just because obviously we want to try and keep him healthy just going towards the next year. And the other part of me really thinks that he should just stick to the sideline and just lead whichever quarterback that the New York Jets decide to actually have as their QB one for this perspective for the remainder of the year. But at the end of like you think about this, Aaron Rodgers, he's been around the league for plenty and plenty of time. He can lead you from a rookie quarterback and he could potentially bring you to the next level quarterback and he can get you a lot of opportunities. And you like you see a lot of the times on the sidelines to where they're sending down the tablets and they're saying, hey, this is where we need to try and adjust here, obviously. Then. Josh, I know we've obviously seen that numerous times, but thinking for Aaron Rodgers here in this type of situation. I sincerely wouldn't mind like to see him back on the field just because outside of this injury, how much time do you think is left for Aaron Rodgers just because he only signed a it was correct me if I'm wrong, it was only a one year contract with New York or I was believe it a two year so. contract? I believe it was just one year with them. So at, at this type of situation, Aaron Rodgers, for all we know, after the season, he could he could hit the road and he can just go over and retire. But at the same time, Aaron Rodgers, he he can get another contract extension for another single year. And we obviously, like I said, for New York Jets fans, we all want to see Aaron Rodgers shine over in the state of New York. And I mean, anything's possible for the New York Jets organization, but for the end of the day, I'd like to see Aaron Rodgers come back and get some, get some playing time. What about you, Josh? Yeah. I mean, I would, I would like to see him on the field. I think that'd be a lot of fun, but realistically, I just, I'm just looking right now. I pulled this up. Uh, so in the AFC East, they're third in the AFC East behind the Buffalo bills and the dolphins. But realistically, if they were to be crazy good and just win out. Uh, so it looks like they should have six games left. Uh, they're four and seven right now behind six and six bills. There is like the slightest opportunity that they would have to be able to make it back. And pulling up their their schedule, they've got Falcons, Texans, both winnable games. Mm. Dolphins in mm. their division, if they could pull out that win, I don't know if he's ready in three weeks. Right by December seventeenth, maybe he's ready by then. If he's maybe. ready by then, and you and you did win those last two games, um, because right now let's see, they're on a four game losing streak. Mm. Just terrible. And the last mm. one being to the Dolphins, yeah. and we saw how that that atrocity yeah. went. Um, so I just looking at this, if they were able to get two wins uh, against the Falcons and Texans, which are, are doable, that's reasonable. Yeah. Uh, so you've got two more. You've got two wins. You go the, to, against the Dolphins. If he's ready then and he's looking ninety percent, why not try to make a run? Exactly. Why not try to try to throw him out there because now you can go on a third win, which is against the leader in your division, mm-hmm. really helping you out and, and and helping your cause. Then you've got the Commanders, winnable. Uh, Browns tough but winnable. It's at the Browns, mm, and then the tough. Patriots tough but winnable. So if you're able to win five out of those six, and Aaron Rodgers is able to help you by that Dolphins game, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm looking at this. It, it's tough. I feel like if you're the, if you're a Jets fan right now, you are looking at a a. If you're a Jets fan, let's be realistic. You feel like oh, we're going to win the Super Bowl. Still, it doesn't matter. Throw them back in. Let's win this thing. Yeah. And so why not? Um, but. If it, if there is another year in in Aaron Rodgers' career, I say just let let, let him keep on warming up in practice and get keeping him keeping the rust warmed, you know, and, uh, kind of kind of keeping the rust off of him, yeah, and get him back in next season. I think you can sign him up to another deal, and I I know that knowing who Aaron Rodgers is and how much he loves the game, I think he comes back for another year yeah. if you let him. So, yeah. man, I don't know. It's it's kind of a tough situation because you are in a really bad look right now and it doesn't look like you have much of any shot, but there is that slight chance that you still make the playoffs. Why not put him back in? Hey, who knows? Maybe Aaron Rodgers' New Year's resolution is to get back on the field for all we know. I mean, <laughs> who knows? Like you just said, listen off like right at Miami the week before Christmas. That could be the best Christmas present actually getting to play for all yeah. we know, but you can never know. But I'd like to see Aaron Rodgers come back for another year. And I didn't see if that one was at or uh, let me see real quick. I'm going to pull up the. I want to the... say it's at Miami, but yeah, like, I think it is because they were just now at the Jets, weren't yeah. they? Yeah. So, so yeah, it would so that be one would be in Miami. Yes. Yeah, so that one would be at the Dolphins. Mm-hmm. Okay. So it would be in Miami. I was going to say if it's the Dolphins. At the Jets, you have a really good shot of pulling up, pulling yeah. off this little upset, yeah. um, just because you know if you open, if there's a way, I don't know if you can open up MetLife, uh, if you could open up the dome, but if you could open up the dome and make it really cold in there, or have like, hey, we're we're 
playing over on the on the outside field over here mm-hmm. and just you know pull it off on a, on an alternate uh, site somewhere where it's cold, cold. And get those dolphins in a cold environment i feel like the jets have a have a chance there hey, but anything's possible yeah i mean it, it, it would be fun to see aaron Rodgers back on the field realistically keep him off the field get him ready for next season and yeah. get him signed to another year if, if that is the case i can't remember for sure we'll have to look that up to fact check ourselves on that yeah but how about patrick kane not signing back with the with the rangers but he's going over to the detroit red wings uh and he is expected to start with the red wings in seven to ten seven, seven to ten, ten days. days uh what does this look like for, uh, and what does this mean for the red wings i think this is a good boost for the detroit red wings we haven't heard patrick kane's name a lot this NF- nfl nhl season here but this is going to I mean, be. He an, hasn't been. He hasn't been playing. Exactly. He hasn't <laughs> been playing. Just because, obviously, like compared to New York, when he was playing in New York, you heard Patrick Kane's name a good number of times. Whether he's lighting the lamp or getting an apple with an assist or who knows the who knows. But like Patrick Kane, he still has life in him. I know he's he's getting up there in age, but at the same time, Josh, you got to think about this here. Patrick Kane, he's got plenty of talent with his stick handling everyone's seen his stick handling abilities like obviously between bauer and all the practice drills that everyone's probably seen on youtube or whatever social media you've probably seen obviously everyone's seen the million pucks out on the ice and patrick kane stick handling around him like it's nothing i've tried that i probably have half the half the pucks on the boards or half the pucks in the center of the ice and this perspective here, I think this is going to be another good opportunity for Detroit. Obviously, you already got some firepower in Detroit. Detroit's on a, on a little bit of a down slump, but with this kind of a situation here, I think that looking down, later down the road towards maybe halfway, three quarters of the end of the season, I think this is definitely going to be something to where when Patrick King gets his feet feet rolling and having the chemistry and all the people that around him knowing that he's got talent, I think this will definitely be an an increased booster for the Detroit Red Wings, Josh. What about you? I mean, looking right now, I'm pulling up the the standings here in the Atlantic uh, in the Atlantic, Atlantic Division. The Detroit Red Wings are only third. They're just behind the Panthers and the Bruins. Mm-hmm. Adding Patrick Kane, like you said, a, a guy that's got stick handling skills like no other. He came over to the Rangers last year and I was extremely excited. Kind of let me down because every one of his shots hit where. The Pops. Right on the post. Patrick Post. Uh, you know, so just looking at Beep. looking at him, <laughs> I think having Kane on their team, I mean, man, I think it could be really big uh, and seeing Patrick Kane go over to the Red Wings. Uh, where the Red Wings stand this year, I think they have a really good shot to make a really good run. Definitely. But like I'm gonna keep i I'm gonna keep hearing the back of my ear. I'm gonna keep hearing that post, but I mean, no, Pat this is definitely another Another step for Patrick Kane, obviously, being with Chicago for what felt like an eternity, then now then going to the New York Rangers for a short period of time, and now the next step in his life, going with the Detroit Red Wings. I know they're definitely going to have love having Patrick Kane over there in Little Caesar Arena, so I think it's going to be, I think he's going to be looking pretty good in the Detroit Red, and they're going to be lighting the lamp a lot. Yeah, could you imagine if you would have gone back to help out Connor Bedard over there in Chicago? Oh, man, that would be... That would have been fun to watch. There was a part of me that was thinking maybe that but Patrick Kane would go back to Chicago. I also think he's making a better move. I think he's going to a team that has a chance to win. That's why he mm-hmm. went to New York because they yeah. had a chance to win and he wanted to go there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, looking looking at Patrick Kane, I, I'm really excited to see what the rest of the season holds, even Definitely. though I really don't care what happens to the Detroit Red Wings, but uh, it's fun to watch Patrick Kane go over there and see what can what they can do over there because they're a team that hasn't really been good uh, mm-hmm. in a while. Yeah. And so they're finally having a good start to the season. Getting a veteran like him in, that could be really big news for him. Absolutely. I mean, yeah, it, it could just take like this. One individual player, He, for all of a sudden, we know they can put their season around. They can become first in the Atlanta division. So they, they could. We can, we're going to find they're, out. They're here. not that far back, too. Whenever, yeah. I'm, whenever I'm looking at it, they've got 20 points. Uh, or, or Sorry, that's that's games played. Uh, points. Like, well, like, they've got 25. They're, they're three points behind the Panthers. Uh, and then another six points behind the Bruins. Not that far behind. Oh, six points can come up really, really well, fast. Especially this early in the season. You've, yeah. you've got a lot of hockey to well, play. Well, now you think, like, it feels like they play every other night in the NHL. But, I mean, sometimes you get those long streaks and you can absolutely just all of a sudden skyrocket to the first place spot. So, for all we know, 
anything's possible here in the NHL, so you got to keep an eye out for Detroit here, Josh. Yeah, they're going to be fun to watch. But Definitely. Let's go on. We've got the Heisman top five. It's getting towards the end, really the end of the season. We've got one more week, and uh, the, this last week, you're not even going to see all of these Heisman winners play in this last week because it's championship week. Mm-hmm. So let's get to our Heisman top five. Jeremy, do you want to start us off with your Heisman top five? <sighs> My Heisman top five. Number five, he just got injured and he's done. I have Jordan Travis with Florida State for my number five. I I love Jordan Travis over at Florida State. He's put up a heck of a career. And correct me if I'm wrong, he was there for six years, wasn't he? Uh, I believe this was his sixth year, yeah. if I remember right. Yeah. That'd be cr- that's crazy. But, I mean, it's, it's an unfortunate deal for his injury, obviously, between all of us at Rise on the Occasion, we hope that you have a speedy and healthy recovery just because something like that is definitely an injury that no one likes to see. Then going to my number four pick, I got Marvin Harrison Jr. for the Heisman at number four. Now, the reason I have I was I had him up really high. I mean, take it for granted, we're always just used to seeing quarterbacks win the Heisman, but Marvin Harrison Jr., he's definitely He's definitely worked himself out to become a Heisman candidate. Look at what he's done for Ohio State and look at everything that he has been able to do. Obviously, in, in critical conditions, outside outside of the Michigan game, we barely heard his name. And any other situation, Marvin Harrison Jr., we, we'd always just see him lighten up the stat sheet. And for all we know, he could, he could be an easily contender for the Heisman candidate. But going to my number three... I had Dylan Gabriel at Dylan my Gabriel, number three, yeah. but Dylan Gabriel, he definitely became out of the woodwork here. And obviously just putting up a big number against TCU. <laughs> and that was, that was really fun. I had, I had so much step activity between going downstairs and upstairs between watching the Nebraska and Oklahoma game. Cause as Josh's family is half of Josh's family is Nebraska fans. And the other half is Oklahoma fans. The Oklahoma game was on the top. And the Nebraska game was down in the basement. So every commercial break, I'd come downstairs, upstairs, and same situation back downstairs. But I definitely got my steps in that day. But I have Dylan Gabriel as my number three. But my number two, I have Michael Penix Jr. at my number two. I like it. I mean, Michael Penix Jr., we've talked about him all year long and just being able to have a heck of a season. Then even on the off games, like against Arizona State and just this last week against Washington State, I sincerely didn't think they were going to win if it wasn't for their field goal kicker, which I'm still skeptical. I mean, I shouldn't say skeptical. I'm still hyped that he got a scholarship out of winning the game for Washington. And just being able to see Michael Penix Jr. and what he's able to do, it's been unbelievable for watching him play. And just this overall season has just been really, really good for him. But my number one pick for... The 2023 Heisman candidate. Blake's going to love me. Bo Picks. Bo Picks. More <laughs> like Bo Heisman, Bo Nix. Bo Nix, we've just seen Bo Nix just tear up the field. His stat sheet almost every week. It just seems like he almost averages over 300 yards per game. It's just what it seems like. Bo Nix has just been... He can, he can really run around. He can make a 65-plus yard bomb and just land on a dime and Bo Nix's QB IQ is just, in my opinion, it's just next level. So, Blake, I know you loved, I know you love hearing it. Bo who, Bo what, Bo Heisman is going to be my number one pick for the 2023 Heisman picks. Josh, I like it. What about you? What did you I have like for it your top lot. five for Heisman? So I'm going to have a much different looking Heisman rankings than you guys, I think, because uh, I think yours and I, you, you and I were pretty close. You threw Dylan Gabriel in there, which I was really surprised. Yeah. Uh, just because Dylan Gabriel had those two losses and they had a lot of games where they just didn't utilize him very much. Yeah. So, uh, but I, I like it. I like throwing him in there uh, and, and I'll always appreciate throwing my guy up there. But yeah. looking at it, I wanted to put Jordan Travis in, but he's going to be out for two games where other guys get to play. And so just right. uh, and, and three games, by the way. Or I guess two. It games. would be two. Yeah. Two games when, when other guys get to play, and so looking at that and understanding that, I think overall stats do matter. I think wins matter. Jordan Travis, absolutely. I I, I hope he does get a chance to go to New York, uh, and I, I hate to see a guy not go to New York just because of an injury. But number five, I mixed it up a little bit. I've got Ollie Gordon, the running back from Oklahoma Ooh. State. The guy has just turned on the Jets, and 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 towards uh, really the third or fourth seat or fourth game is when they really started using him. 
and seeing the yards that he's put up this season, he's had 1,852 total yards, 21 total touchdowns, and he's got a 6.4 yard average. Wow. Uh, the guy is just absolutely unbelievable. He's sitting there at 131.6 yards per game. I, I had to throw him in there because I, you've got to give some love to the running backs. And this dude is, I think he is the best running back in college football right now. And it, it sucks that he's on such a crappy team. Um, but anyways, uh, and it sucks that he's going to lose. And by next week, I'll probably drop him out because he's not, he's not going to run as well <laughs> against Texas. Uh, I do think Texas shuts him down, but for the time being it's before the championship game. And I'm going to put him up there because I think he does deserve some love. Number, number four though, uh, I've got Marvin Harrison jr. I know he just lost the game against Michigan state or sorry against Michigan. Um, that team up North did, did whoop up on him, but he only had five receptions. And with those five receptions, he did just fine. I think he's put up an amazing season. Uh, looking at Marvin Harrison jr. This year, we knew he was special last year, but he had a better quarterback. Uh, and, and he had, uh, w- w- he had 10 more attempts last year, and this is the yards that he puts up this year, 1,237 total yards, 15 total touchdowns on 69 attempts. Last year, there was 79 attempts. Uh, and so last year, he had the same amount of touchdowns with 10 more attempts at the b- at having the ball in his hands, receptions, uh, and very similar yards with a worse QB this year. And so I just think seeing that he is absolutely... Uh, he is detrimental to that Ohio State team. Without him, they would not be where they were throughout this season. Yes, I know they lost to Michigan, but that was a very close game. And a, a, a big part of their winning throughout the season was because of Marvin Harrison Jr. And I think he deserves to go to New York regardless of what happens this upcoming week. And then number three, I've got Michael Penix Jr. I dropped him down to number three just because I was looking at the stats of these top three guys that I've got. And I just, I have to be completely unbiased. I love Michael Penix Jr. If I had to pick one out of these top three, he is my guy. He is the guy that I, I, I love rooting for him. I love his, his demeanor. I love who he is. Uh, Michael Penix Jr., number three. He's got 3,885 total yards, 35 touchdowns on a 65.6% completion percentage, eight interceptions on the year. Not bad at all. Uh, I'm, I'm okay with eight interceptions. But when you look at the next guy up, it's Jaden Daniels at number two, LSU quarterback with 4,946 total yards. He's had over 1,000 rushing yards. Uh, The dude has been absolutely unstoppable. 50 total touchdowns, 72.2% completion percentage, and only four interceptions. That's the only reason why I have him above Michael Penix Jr. And I have a hard time doing that because I love Michael Penix Jr. And I want to fight for Michael Penix Jr. to win it. Uh, And personally, I think the winner of the Pac-12 championship game between Michael Penix Jr. and Bo Nix, I think they win it, which leads me into Bo Nix at number one. He's had 4,065 yards total, uh, 43 total touchdowns, and 78.6% completion percentage on only two interceptions Mm. the entire year. Not Bo Picks anymore. It is Bo Heisman. I think he wins the Heisman if he wins the Pac-12 championship game. If he doesn't, I think Jaden Daniels wins it only because he put up the stats that he had. I think if Washington wins, they were 13-0. and I think Michael Penix Jr. deserves to win it over Jaden Daniels because he led his team to victory. Yeah. So I, I, that's, why, that's the only reason why I have him jump above Jaden Daniels if it, it does go to that. Uh, mm-hmm. So I, I think that championship means a lot, even in the Heisman race. Yeah. So there's my top five. Uh, I don't have Blake's yet, but we will put out a graphic with all of our top five for Heismans, and we'll make sure to post that on social media. So go follow us on social media. Help us out over there. Help us grow. We're, I'm going to post that on Facebook, Twitter, I guess X, formerly known as Twitter, Instagram, all that fun stuff. So go check it out over there. And please... Uh, show us some love on social media, Josh. Yeah. I want to. I want to stop it for a second. If you have to give an honorable mention, I'm just throwing this out there with JJ McCarthy with Michigan after beating Ohio State. Do you think he should get an honorable mention with beating Ohio State? And for all the criticism that he's gotten all year and saying, and I'll admit, I said this at one time, they haven't played anybody good. But yeah, I, I think I think Michigan, and I've been saying this all season long. I don't I don't like the concept that Michigan or Ohio State didn't play anybody. They didn't play right. up to their competition. Right. I think both of them were outstanding teams, mm-hmm. and I thought I thought. Ohio State would have had a more complete offense going into that game than they mm-hmm. really did. Their offense just could not get rolling. Yeah. Michigan's defense stopped their run game. Huge. And Michigan was more committed to the run, even though Ohio State was better at the run. Oh, they were Ohio State or committed. Michigan was more committed to it, and that's mm-hmm. why they win. I think it's 22 straight games where the more committed team wins that matchup. Mm-hmm. Uh, I personally, I don't, 
I don't put J.J. McCarthy in the Heisman race. I don't think he has Heisman numbers. I think he is a Heisman candidate if he puts up better numbers. Right. He just hasn't really put up those kind of numbers on a year where he really could have with that competition. Right. Uh, Blake Corum, on the other hand, he didn't have he didn't have the numbers this year. He did last year. I think he is more of a team leader uh, in terms of of leading them to victory. I think J.J. McCarthy is the vocal leader. True. So I think I think Blake McCorum puts it on the field. JJ McCarthy is the vocal leader. I do like both of them a lot, though. Oh yeah, absolutely. But no, I just wanted to throw that out there. I want your honest opinion. Yeah. Like same with you guys. We want to hear your guys' opinion. Do you think JJ McCarthy gets an honorable mention here? Like we'd love to hear from you guys your top five Heisman picks as well. But I mean, I just want to throw that out there. I wanted to hear everybody's opinion, but I was just really skeptical with. Like I said, I'll admit it. I said it at one at the early stages of the of the college football season. They haven't played anybody good, but. Like I said, I'll put my money where my mouth is, and I surely ate it just because J.J. McCarthy, when it came time to play in Ohio State, he showed up. So I, I will say I was the one that kept on stepping in for Michigan and Ohio State and saying I think they're both really good, and I think both of them have the potential. I just wish we could have that rematch mm-hmm. because I think that rematch in Indianapolis between those two, oh, if you took man. divisions out, that, I mean, Iowa does not deserve to be in no, a Big Ten championship God, no. game. They squeezed their way through all of these wins. Uh, and to be fair, they probably should have had another win on there if you count that Minnesota. Yeah. But we'll just leave it out there. I yeah. think I think Michigan runs the table, and I think I'm going to finally not hit the under on, on a game for Iowa. Uh, so I, I don't know. Let's let's look it up real quick because I am curious now that we bring that up. Josh, but I want your It's just one of those, those games. I, I, don't, I think Michigan scores enough to, to hit right. the over on it. Imagine this. How bonkers... Just even in the state of Iowa alone that we're in, if Iowa were to pull off the biggest upset of eternity and beat Michigan, if that were to happen, I think the entire state of Iowa would burn down. We couldn't even produce any more corn crops for next year. I think you're delusional, but it's sitting oh, at 34 and a half. I know so I'm 34 and a half. I think this comes out to a 34 to 10 kind of game. Yeah. I, and and the, the, the touchdown scored was on the defense. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> or, I mean, or if we want to do this, let's see. So like, uh, maybe like the way that Iowa is a, a safety and two field goals. So we'll give them eight, eight points. points. Yeah. So, go. so 30 to eight, uh, we, we hit that over. Like so I, said, I, I know it's not going to happen. I think Michigan puts up 30 points on them. I think they're really wanting to just muddy up the waters as much yeah, or bloody absolutely. up the waters is what I meant yeah, as much absolutely. as they can just rip them to pieces. Yeah. Like I said, I know it's not going to happen. <laughs> I, There's no way in. I, I could form. see this. This is one of those games where, Iowa wins because Michigan was just not looking at who they were facing and just thinking ahead to, we've got the college football playoffs in the back. I just don't think it's going to happen. No. But, man, let's get over to the college football top six uh, because the top six, I mean, I'm not going to put my rankings out there because if I'm going to put my rankings, I'm just looking at the, what the committee did for me. Mm-hmm. This is one of the first times I think the committee got it right. I don't see much where you can, you can say that this was wrong. But uh, go ahead and, and pull up that uh, pick number three. So if we look at pick number three here, so we've got this situation. So right now, as it stands, uh, it's we've got number one, Georgia, number two, Michigan, number three, Washington, number four, Florida State, number five, Oregon, and number six, Ohio State. So that's the way that it actually stands right now. But this is a scenario. So who is in if this is the scenario? Let's say Georgia loses to Alabama in the SEC championship game. Very likely to happen. That's possible. Let's, let's not say that this is out no. of the out of the question because Alabama's been on a roll, and again, pun not really intended, but they have been on a roll, uh, and and so that that tide has been going, and it's been it's been right in their their direction. Everything's been going right for them. Georgia has just been having a few games where they're squeaking by, but they know how to win games. Yeah, that's the and, thing. And you look at the comparison between the two. Georgia wins on on every comparison, but. Alabama's had the tougher schedule. They're they're That's more true. battle tested for this. So I think I think it's very possible. I'm not putting my money on Alabama yet, but it's very possible. And then Texas wins the Big 12. I don't think they have any any uh, any any problem. problems with OSU. I think o- o- Oregon, uh, Oklahoma State. I can't even remember what their name is because they, they suck so bad, uh, yet they still beat Oklahoma, and that's the only reason why they're in there. Um, but uh, anyways, Texas beats Oklahoma State for the Big 12 championship game. Oregon beats Washington for the Pac-12 championship. All right, so we've got a little bit of murky waters now. We've got one, two, three, four, five teams with one loss, all deserving to get that uh, up into the into the top four spots. Mm-hmm. How do you rank these 
if you have to take these, uh, what is that, seven teams, seven teams and pick just four of them, who gets in? I'm in the same boat with you. This is this is the best I've seen the committee pick here. So so obviously, I think I think you and I are in agreement uh, in, in agreement that Michigan and Florida State, you're 13 and 0, both conference champions, you get in. Yep. Georgia is not a conference champion, so maybe they don't get in. I don't know. Do you throw in Alabama? But then we've got Oregon, who's a conference champion, who beat the team that they they formerly lost to. And then also, if you put Alabama in, Texas beat Alabama. So I'm going to say Washington in this scenario. Washington's probably out. I'm going to cross them out. Mm-hmm. You agree with that? I'm, I'm saying the same okay, thing. Okay, so Michigan, Bo Florida State. Redemption. Michigan, Florida State. We're going to say Oregon is in, right? Okay. Maybe, yeah. maybe put Oregon at number four. Yeah. Now who do you put in? Georgia, who has just been dominant and reigning champs, but they just lost the championship to Alabama. Or do you put Alabama? Or do you put Texas, who beat Alabama earlier in the season? I honestly want to pick Alabama for this situation. If I'm picking the four best teams, and this is what I think the committee would do, I go with Alabama. But if I'm going based on who beat who, and the more fair way to do this, I'm saying Texas. This is the dilemma that we're going to. We could very well see. Yeah, we could even see a, a, a muddier, a muddier waters, waters. Yeah. where Florida State loses too. That's very possible too. I think Louisville has a chance to beat beat Florida State. That's true. Uh, so if Florida State were to go twelve and one, now they probably drop out of the situation or out of the scenario. Then we have, if that was the case, let's say Florida State's thirteen and one. Let's let's drop them and Washington out. That's that's what I would say, right? Yeah, that's what I'd probably say. So too. now we've got Michigan, and then I would say at number two. I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm going Alabama, Alabama. just because I think Alabama is the better team. Yeah, and then. Texas, Oregon, or do you keep Texas out and put Georgia in? I'd say, I feel like Georgia's the better team. Yeah, it is, but there's, a, I agree. But, but, but better Texas, team, but, but Texas has earned, earned that, that spot. spot. They they yeah. they lost to Oklahoma. Oh, okay, but they beat Alabama. Yeah. So wouldn't that mean that if you're really going to rank the teams, Texas deserves in over Alabama? Yeah. But Alabama won the SEC, so they deserve in over. I think the fair way to say would be. Michigan, uh, and then uh, what do we say? So Michigan, Michigan then Alabama, Alabama, then Oregon, Oregon then Texas, Texas. Because I think Oregon does deserve to be up there in the two or three because they beat Washington, who they lost to earlier earlier in the season. Yeah. So that's the more fair way to do it. But honestly, I think you're going to see a Michigan, Michigan Oregon. Oregon. Uh, well, in this scenario, probably Michigan, then Alabama, just because they're in the SEC, yeah, Michigan, then Oregon, Alabama, which Oregon. doesn't matter because they're going to play against each other. Yeah. And then you're going to see Georgia. Yeah. So then what you're going to see is an, an Alabama versus Oregon, Oregon and then Michigan versus Georgia. And they line it up this way yeah. because then we see two SEC teams in the, in the national championship. Josh, I want, to pick, I, want, I want your honest opinion here. For the Florida State-Louisville game, I, I'm not going to lie. I kind of have a little bit of a favor with Louisville here. Just I, think, I understand, like, without Jordan Travis, like, it hasn't been the same offense like what we've seen with Florida State, but they're still playing their full potential. Now, we talk about Louisville here. We've talked about, we haven't talked a whole bunch about Louisville, but Louisville has stepped up to the plate here. Yeah, Do you I, think, I think there might be an upset? I think it, it could be. But the reason why I'm picking... Uh, Maybe I shouldn't jump ahead of myself because I know we're going to talk we're about these teams on this. Saturday. Yeah. Uh, so make sure to tune in on Saturday because we're going to talk about all these teams. All these teams are going to be in championship games. Mm-hmm. We're going to talk all Power 5 championship games on Saturday morning at 8.30 Central, 9.30 Eastern. So make sure to tune in right here on YouTube. But I look at that game and I, I pick Florida State and I lean Florida State because of their defense. What we saw against Florida was that they were down 15 to 14 and their defense did not even bend. We talk true. about a bend, but don't break defense. Their Florida state defense did not bend mm-hmm. and propelled their offense to go and win the game. Yeah. Uh, and they ended up going, I think it was 10 points to win the game yeah. 24 to 15. So I think that this defense keeps everything in and, and looking at what, what else they have, they have Coleman and I'm drawing a blank on Florida state's, uh, running back right now, but they've they've got so many so many big time guys. Uh, I know I'll have it here in just a second. Oh, it's not one to load for me. So I got you. Um, but it, it, just looking at everything else, they've got guys on offense. I think they have enough around them to make it work. So I pick Florida State. I don't think Louisville is going to pull off the upset, 
but it very well could happen. And if that happens, then Florida State doesn't deserve to get in because they didn't even win their conference championship game. And then I think you just have to pick the four best teams over that, uh, which if that were the case, let's say that Michigan uh, and Georgia both win. I think they're in. Uh, and then you've got Texas wins Big 12. I think they're in. And then the winner of the Pac-12, uh, which I'm not really sure. I don't know which way to lean. Let's say if it's Washington and Washington goes in, if it's Oregon, Oregon goes in. That one's still a really close one for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, so if, if I, I could see that being the case too, where we've got Michigan, Georgia, uh, I guess it'd probably be Georgia number one if they win the SEC championship game. So let's say we would have Michigan, or sorry, Georgia, then Michigan, and then Texas, uh, and then let's just say Oregon, Oregon. wins. Yeah. So then, I mean, that's, that's no matter no matter what any of these seven teams that they're they're the teams that have the chance of getting in. Most likely, these are the only only seven teams that have any chance of getting in. Uh, and I I I love seeing any any one of these seven teams get in. I don't care what the the scenario is. Yeah, is it Trey Benson? Yes, or, Benson. Okay. Yes, that's right. Uh, and I didn't know. If it was and just Lawrence. looking at him and Coleman, I think they've got those two guys together. Put enough of an uh, of an offense out there where you've got enough skill out there where you've got a couple of different ways to to go. And and I think the backup QB too that's that's stepping in for Jordan Travis. I think he's going to do just fine. Yeah. Uh, and and I think he's going to have more time. He had a little bit of a, a a game to get off of his chest and a big time game in your rivalry yeah. game. So uh, no pressure. I, I I think Florida State wins that game still, okay. and so I'm I'm keeping them undefeated right okay. now. But I could I could see the upset. It's, yeah. it's not to it's not to rule it out there because no. Louisville has surprised us in the past, and Notre Dame was the first one. Exactly. Uh, and then they also surprised us when they lost to Kentucky. But we won't talk about that. Yep. But it's it's going to be a lot of fun. We're really excited. So make sure again to tune in on Saturday morning right here on this YouTube channel to watch us. We're going to talk uh, of all the Power Five championship games. I know Jeremy won't be with us on Saturday, but we will make sure to talk about all those. But let's jump into our fan duel bets again to let everybody know you can go over to rising2.com slash FanDuel and you can go over there and get signed up with FanDuel. And if you bet $5, you'll get $150 in bonus bets. FanDuel has been an extremely fun uh, sports book to bet with, uh, one of the new ones that we've been trying out. Uh, and that's why we're bringing them to you guys to give you guys a chance to go over there and get yourself an amazing promo. F- bet $5 on any game and win $150 in bonus bets. That's an amazing way to get your uh, your pocketbook started. You get your bankroll started over there on FanDuel. $200 or $150 in bonus bets. That can go a long ways. Uh, so go check it out. Again, that is rising2.com slash FanDuel, R-I-S-I-N-G-T-O.com slash FanDuel. Uh, you can go there. The link is down in the description. Just know that that promo may vary based on your location. Uh, and then you also must be 21 or older. And please gamble responsibly. We want you guys to take all of these these bets uh, responsible. I don't have Blake's FanDuel bets for tonight, um, but I will throw mine out there. I've got FAU in college basketball, minus 7.5 against Liberty. Uh, that's at minus 102. I like FAU to win that game comf- comfortably. Uh, and then I've also got Dallas versus Seattle under in, uh, over there in the NFL because uh, we've got a Thursday night game. So in Dallas, for a second, I was thinking maybe I was I was betting Dallas on Stars. NHL, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so I had to, I had to think of think about it there for a little bit on me. Um, but yeah, Dallas versus Seattle, the NFL game, the Thursday night football game. I'm gonna bet under 47 and a half at minus 112. Jeremy, what do you got for this fine Thursday FanDuel bets? Those are some pretty bold bets. I I like it. But for my picks, I have the money line for the Edmonton Oilers, and I have the Edmonton Oilers winning it at minus 114 against the Jets against the Jets. So this is definitely going to be pretty interesting here, but the other one I was, I was really contemplating back and forth at it. I last, the last episode I went all strict on the hardwood here. Now I'm going strictly back to my roots and going to the NHL. This one I'm picking the over under for the New Jersey devils versus the Philadelphia flyers. I'm in the under. I watched a little bit of the New Jersey Devils last night. They put their goal, their uh, they pulled their starting goalie Vita Vanacek, and they put the backup goalie Sioux City representation Akira, Akira Schmidt, Schmidt, and he got back in the pipes. He didn't allow a single goal, so that was really really cool to see that. I'm picking the under, like I said, ladies and gentlemen, that is sitting at minus 138. I was really really close to picking the over here at six and a half, but 
And I, I think I was looking at that one too, whenever you pulled it up or whenever you told me before the show too. And I think that one is at like minus one, one twelve, something yeah. like that. So yeah, I mean, you picked the more favorable side. Yeah. So I, I think I like it. But, uh, and, and like you said too, with Akira Schmidt back in there, the Flyers defense has been pretty solid all season long. They've been playing surprisingly really well. Really good. Uh, yeah. they're, they're one of the honorable mentions that I think we brought up uh, whenever we were talking to the NHL a little while back. You thank Bobby so, Brink for that one. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're another Sioux City Musketeer. Yeah, they they are looking really good over there, uh, yeah. and so I, I I like that game, uh, and like I said, I will have Blake's. Uh, to pull up and put it on the graphic. So again, make sure to go and follow us on social media. I'll make sure that's on uh, Facebook and X and Instagram. So go check it out. Right now are sitting where I am in the lead, 10 and 4, and plus 4.89 units. And Blake and Jeremy both tied in the record, 8 and 6, but Blake is 0.78 units up, and Jeremy is 0.1 or sorry, 1.16 units up. So Jeremy is actually in second place, not trailing the 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 team here, keeping it steady. For once. Uh we're we're all we're all on a winning record too, and oh, I like sure. that. Both you guys are both two two games ahead uh on on our or I guess two wins ahead of your winning record. And so looking really good. I, I like this month. And FanDuel has been really fun to bet with too. So making making it a lot more fun. So again, go over to rising2.com slash fanduel, get signed up today. Bet $5 on any game and get $150 in bonus bets. And again, that promo may vary based on your location and you must be 21 or older. Please gamble responsibly. But guys, that is all that we've got for you here today. We thank you all so much for tuning in and for joining us here on Rising to the Occasion. If you are watching on YouTube, make sure to hit that subscribe button. You can hit that like button as well. That helps us out so much over here and comment down below. Uh, Again, just throw us a comment. I don't even care what it is. I will read it um, because... I get bored and want to read something anyways, so just throw it down there. Uh, we love to, to check it out. Um, but if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to your podcasts, you can give us a five-star review. And if you don't listen to one of those main uh, podcast platforms Platform, so. that gives you the five-star reviews, you can go over to our website, which is also down. Uh, that link is down in the description to go leave us a review over there as well. We thank you all so much for all of your love, all your support, for sticking around with us, and for helping us grow Keep on helping us. But guys, until next time.